The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host. Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OA and host of Last Three Brain Cells and the host of Between Terminas on OA Native Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on OA Native Television. A lot to look at this week. Obviously, we got the holiday showcase tournaments coming up. I mean, what we're filming now is I know there's a couple games being played right now. I know Harper Woods is playing Waterford Mott. Right now, as we speak, as we're filming this week here on the pod, um, we got a lot to look at with the holiday classics. Um, obviously, you know, you got the Motor City Round Ball with um, several teams there that's to be and take place. The boys are at Ferndale. The girls are at um, Westfield Prep. Um, and then you have the North Farmington Extravaganza. Um, of course, Troy and North Farmington are in that. Um, then you have the St. Clair Community College Showcase um, that features several OA teams. We're going to break those down. Also, we got the New Baltimore Inca Bay Tournament and also the um, Carlton um, Airport Showcase. Um, when you really look at the tournament, I mean, the classics, I mean, like, you know, to me, you know, am I a fan of them? You know, yes and no. And then you got other games that are um, non-league ga- uh, got non-league games that are being played at different sites. I know Troy Athens on um, boys basketball, they're playing um, at Little Caesars Arena against Okemos, um later on. Um, so that'll be really interesting to see. We're going to talk about each team, where their storylines are at right now. Um, of course, there's a couple teams that are on um, holiday break. Um, obviously going to be scrimmaging likely, you know, to make sure they're in, um, they're in good shape before the new year starts. Um, a lot to really look at um, when you look at the um, – how the new year's been. Obviously, we've had state champions in girls' soccer. We've had um, with Bloomfield Hills. Um, Adams, of course, going on a tear in boys' soccer and um, girls' golf um, this fall. Um, just a lot of things that went well for the OA this 2022. Um, so, a lot to be thankful for for the OA, obviously, from 2022. Um, a lot of good things to look forward to hitting in 2023 for the league. Um Let's look at the round ball. Uh, let's look at the tournaments, um, the classics. Obviously, when you look at obviously, you're going to start with the Motor City round ball. Um, we're going to go boys first. Um, I think when you look at the boys side of things, I mean, like you look at obviously Harper Woods playing Water Vermont right now. Um, there is some concern with Harper Woods, obviously not playing a week and a half, but they've been much better defensively. I mean, obviously, you know, you're playing a Water Vermont team that has a um, – Good player in Caleb Osborne. Um, well coached. I mean, they just played Birmingham Brother Rice a couple. I mean, UD Jesuit, and that was not a good good feeling for them. So it'd be very interesting to see what happens there. Of course, um, I will recap that game on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. I'm on the um, column here um, on the Holiday Classic Tournament column. Um, recapping that. I mean, like, so it'll be really interesting to see what happens there between them. Um, Harper Woods and um, Waterford Mott. Um, now let's look at West Bloomfield. Um, West Bloomfield, you know what? I've been really impressed with West Bloomfield. I mean, with the start that they've had, um, 5-0 and start, Coach Arnett Jordan has been an, has done an outstanding job with this team. He's built depth. They've won games when their top players were out. I mean, that tells me something right there with Coach Arnett Jordan. That tells me something. You know, that they can win games when they're not feeling the greatest. They're, I mean, like, when they have to overcome. I mean, they had to overcome Warren Fitzgerald, 44-42. Um, then, of course, winning that game against Ann Arbor Skyline at Eastern Michigan. That was a big deal for West Bloom. That was a big, big deal. Um, now they're out to a 5-0 and start. Um, it's kind of funny when you look at the white this year. I mean, the white. This year is a combined twenty three and six heading into Christmas. That's that's something. When you look at the teams in the you have Groves, Troy, West Bloomfield, um, Bloomfield Hills, Lake Orion, and Farmington. Those are the teams that are consistent of the white. Um, Farmington obviously has had a battle of flu outbreak. Um, we're going to talk Farmington in a minute here, but back to West Bloomfield. 
Uh, Mitchell C has been playing really well. They've had some great pieces that have played really well in those games. And for them, you know, to get off that 5 0 start, play some really good teams on that schedule. I mean, that tells you something right there. That really does. Um, could they be a player in the white? Sure. They could be. Um, but when you look at West Bloomfield, their game that it gets Grove Point South. Um, Grove Point South is coming off a win against Groves, um, where they ended up beating them. Um, I mean, it was it was it was close, but you know, but um, Blue Devils they're a solid team. I mean, don't be surprised. You know, they're going to be in the conversation come postseason time because I know they're the same district with Harper Woods, um, and that's going to be really a interesting district to keep an eye on. Um, growth, both Growth Point North, Growth Point South, and Harper Woods in that district. Uh, um, so when you look at this matchup, it's an interesting matchup. Um, I think both teams want to go up and down. Question is, can West Bloomfield defensively, you know, against the Growth Point South? I think they're better talent-wise. I mean, we're going to see what happens. I mean, clearly when you really look at it, um, West Bloomfield, to me, um, you know, they looked the part. They played a tough schedule, you know, and when you look at the rankings this week, um, there's a clear, people are going to say, well, you have West Bloomberg or Bloomberg Hills. There's a reason for that. Um, but I just think at the end of the day here, um, with the way West Bloomberg is playing right now, you know, they're on cloud nine right now. If they knock off growth points out, that's going to give them big confidence. And, you know, I can say the same thing with Harper Woods. Obviously, as I talked earlier, you know, Harper Woods, I think with them, they look like they're the they're the top team in the gold right now with the way they're playing. Now, Abner might have a say about that. It's hard for me to trust Southie the way they're playing. Um, Ferndo University's been out, up and down, and Pontiac, yikes. Um, with the way they've been playing. They only scored 11 points against the Rhyme at Summit Academy. That's not good. Um, but... When you back to West Bloomfield, I think when you look at the Lakers, um, I think that, you know, the sky's the limit for Arnold Jordan's team. The sky is the limit. I mean, that's clearly what's been going on. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we will see what happens with the way that um with that game's gonna go. Um, between West Bloomfield and Gross Point South. Um, and then you have Ferndale taking on Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, this one's going to be a really interesting matchup. Um, Ferndale, I think, is the best one in three team in the state right now. The way they've been playing, they played a vicious schedule. Um, they haven't played in a week and a half, so that's a little bit of a concern. Um, but when but when you look at the Eagles, I mean, like Cameron Reed's been playing really well. I like what Chris Williams has been doing. Um, Coach Ron Rickman's got some talent. I mean, that's for sure. Um. Now you're playing against a team like Orchard Lake St. Mary's who has a, um, obviously, um, Jamal McKinney's there. I mean, like, he's been playing really well for them lately. They just added two transfers in there from the, um, um, from, you know, who came in. They had an, an, an eligibility issue with the um, Catholic League. They've got that resolved, and now they're playing again. Um, it's an interesting matchup, but I just think Ferndale's a little bit better than Orchard Lake St. Mary's this year. I, I mean, it's hard for me to trust Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Yes, they had a lot of great talent last year. I mean, yes, they've had a lot of, they've been really good as a powerhouse. Yes, they got Trey McKinney, obviously. Um, but I just, it's hard for me to trust them. You know, it really is. Um, Ferndale, hope, hopefully that week and a half rest is really going to help them. Um, if they get off to any sort of rust factor, that could be a big problem for them. Um, so when you really look at the Eagles, I mean, like in, and for them going ahead, obviously being in the red, um, you know, and you're looking at teams like North Farmington, you're looking at teams like Adams, you're looking at Clarkston, Oak Park. Um, that's going to be a tall task. I mean, to say the least, I mean, in that division. Um, so when you look at the, um, so when you really look at Ferndale, um, this is a game they need. I mean, like, if they don't get this game against Order Lake St. Mary's, um, I mean, we'll see. I mean, like, could this be a confidence hurt? Maybe. I mean, their district, you know, when you really look at it, their district, to me, I thought would be tough, but it looks really winnable now for them, considering, you know, Fernand University's been around 500. Lincoln King Academy's not been the same team. I mean, they've been giving up over 
they they put up points, but they give it up points. Um, so really, you know, when you really look at Ferndale, their chances, um, I think their chances are good. Um, but they've been they're playing a vicious game. They still got to play in Ohio coming up in January. I know they got to play at St. Vincent St. Mary's High School. Um, that'll be really interesting to see what happens with them. Um, very curious to see what happens with Ferndale. Really, yeah. Um, other games, of course, going on the, going on today. Um, we're gonna also talk. Um, we're gonna also go down the next day here. We got the Stony Creek um, Cougars. They're playing on the twenty eighth. They're taking on Pontiac Notre Dame Prep at one fifty five. Um, when I look at Stony Creek, um, this is hard for me to explain with this team because I had them as a favorite in the blue. And they're already behind the eight ball a little bit because they just lost to Oxford the other night. Um, I know for Coach Jeff Owen, there's a transition period. And it has to happen during the season. Yes, you have, um, yes, you have um, some really good players. You have Peyton Rumble there. You have, um, you have um, Leo Kent. You have, um, I mean, like, when you look at Stony Creek right now, I know that there has to be a transition there has to be a transition period. And it has to happen during the season. I mean, you got proven playmakers. With Trey Walker there, you got Peyton Rumbers mentioned, Leo Kent's there. But when you look at Stony Creek, their problem is, you know, they're going through a transition period. And learning from experience, you know, when you look at the, t- the 2004 Detroit Pistons, I'm going to use them as a perfect example to describe Stony Creek. Describe Coach Jeff Bowen's team. When you have to have a transition period, when you bring in a whole new staff, a whole new program, you have to have that transition period. It has to happen during the season. You know, and I think that's where Stony Creek's at right now. Is they have to have that transition period, and it has to happen during the year. Now, later in the year, I I wouldn't want to play Stony Creek right now. I wouldn't want to play them. Because you know they're going to be fully in tune, but it's going to take a year, you know, maybe a couple months, you know, maybe a couple weeks for them to say, okay, um, you know, this is what we got to do to win games. And let's not forget, Sony Creek really struggled last year under Coach Steve Nurgrove in his final year. I mean, they really did. So for Coach Jeff Owen, he's got to get that culture to back to winning. You know what I mean? That's that's hard to do. You know, when you look at a team that, you know, has been a cuss, that's been, you know, has had a really rough year, you know, last year. Um, but you got to get that team back to winning. Do I think Stony Creek has a chance to do well in the blue? Yes, I do. Now, when you look at the division right now, you know, yes, Royal Oaks red hot right now, but they really haven't played anybody. I mean, they had 13 threes against Madison Knights, Bishop Foley. They got three very good, pl- they got a couple very good players. I like Davis Arbiter. I like Clark Camden and Dylan Hoppin a lot. I think Coach Aaron Smith's done a really nice job of that team. Um, Oxford's been w- starting to win without Jake Champagne. That tells you something about the Wildcats. I mean, Lucas Botate's really been playing good basketball. He's had 27 points in two straight games against Lapeer and Livoni Clarenceville. Um, and they played Stony Creek. Rochester, we know about them. They're coming off that win against Adams. Um, Berkeley, they're getting better. Um, Tamir Rekovich has had a nice start to the year. I mean, the blue, I mean, Seahome's always scrappy. Once they get healthy, look out. I mean, and then Troy Athens, obviously, you know, they got some good pieces there. So when you look at the division, the blue, it's a tough division. I mean, it kind of was a pick em early on, but you're kind of starting to figure things out in this division. I mean, you know, obviously, you got to figure out, okay, where does Stony Creek fit in this equation? Where do they fit? I mean, if they can knock off Notre Dame Prep, who has got a really good point guard, Riley Robinson, um, I think that'll give Stony Creek a ton of confidence. I mean, Stony Creek's a team that needs some confidence. I mean, like, because right now, you know, they had that, they had a tough loss early on against New Baltimore and Quebec. And then they had a tough loss to Groves. Groves is good this year. Um, and then, of course, you lose to Oxford. You know, you're 0-3. 
tough spot in the blue, and you're in a tough spot right now. So basically, if you're the Cougars, you know, yes, you're going through that transition period. It's difficult. But I think later on in the year, I think it'll turn around <laughs> for Stony Creek. I, I think it's going to turn around. And this will be a team I don't think anybody wants to see come postseason time. And later in the year, I don't think this will be it. Anybody wants to see them. I mean, I think they're going to be, they're going to be, they're going to be fine. I'm not pressing the panic button on Stony Creek. I'm not pressing the panic button on them. Um, then we'll go to December 29th, the Motor City Round Ball. You got Adams taking on um, Birmingham Detroit Country Day. This should be a win for Adams. Um, for Adams, they gave up when you can't let a team shoot over 60% and expect to win. You really can't. I mean, Rochester had a really nice game plan for Adams. Now, albeit Adams did not have Brady pre-scoring. Peter Krakis had 31 points in that game. William G had 14. I mean, that tells you something about Adams. They missed pre-scoring. I mean, they really missed Brady pre-scoring. I mean, pre-scoring averages about 20 a game. I mean, I'm not sure about his availability for this game. But I don't think you're going to have any issue with Detroit Country Day. I'd be shocked if they do. Um, but Adams right now in that red, you know, they need preschool. That's obvious. Um, Bloomfield Hills, um, they take on Henry Ford, Troy Henry Ford. They also take on, um, Detroit Pershing in the, um, Detroit Martin Luther King, um, no, in the, um, in the Detroit Public School League Holiday Classic. Um, I think this is a Bloomfield Hills right now. They're five and zero. They're rolling people. Noah Adam Chase looks like a really good player. But here's the thing: Bloomfield Hills has not played anybody. I mean, like, you know, when you really look at it here, the schedule they've been playing. I mean, they're teams that they should beat. I mean, they're teams that they should go in there and just beat them. I mean, Romeo maybe was a was a must win was a a little bit of anything game, but everybody else on that schedule they played, they have won that, and they cover the spread. So when we look at Bloomfield Hills, they there's no surprise. It's not surprising to me that they're five and zero. They should be six and zero if they can knock off Detroit Pershing, which I think they will. Noah Adams hits the real deal. He's averaged over 30, over thirty five a game. That tells you something. But like I said, it's going to come down to is can this team, you know, when they play against some really good teams, I mean, this in their district, they got to deal with Birmingham Brother Rice. West Bloomfield looks better. They are better. I mean, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, you know, once they start getting a tomb, that's going to be scary. So there's a lot to do if you're Bloomfield Hills. Um, so when you look at the Blackhawks, they should be undefeated before heading into league play. They should be. I mean, if not, you know what I mean, then something's wrong. I mean, that's my take on Blue Bay Hills. They're 5-0, they're, they're and oh, yes. But the schedule they played doesn't wow me. Really doesn't. They got some good players there, but that schedule doesn't wow me. They should be 6-0. and oh. They should be. So we'll see. But they're off to a good start. Oak Park, Macomb, Dakota. Um, this is an interesting match of Oak Park's 3-0. and um, Haven't played in a week and a half, so that's something to really watch for. Um, I really think with Oak Park, um, for me, with them, they've done everything right. They've done well. They've had to survive some games, though. I mean, their sophomores have been really good. But I like Lawan Holiday. He's been playing really good basketball for Coach Duran Shepard. Um, I like Geno Hutchins as well. He's also been playing really good basketball as well. Um, the problem with Oak Park for me, and this is not a league problem. This is a postseason issue. They've got UAD Jesuit in that district. They have not fared well against UAD Jesuit. They, until they exercise that UAD Jesuit problem, it's going to be really hard to see Oak Park maximize their potential. I mean, yes, you're in the red. Yes, you're playing against really good competition. But until you exercise 
Your UD Jets were a problem. And yes, UD Jets was a very good team. They got Sonny Wilson there. He just came back, really did well against Water Vermont. But, and I think this is something that a lot of Knight fans, you know, that I've got to look at. You know what I mean? Is they've got, and I'm saying this to them, honestly, you've got to exercise your UD Jesuit problem. You got to, you got to go there. You got to exercise that problem. You know, you're going to have to play them. You're going to have to see them and you're going to have to beat them. Because if you want to have a deep postseason run, you want to and maximize that potential, you got to go through the Cubs. That's really what you got to do if you're Coach Ryan Shepard. You got to go through them. That's really how it is with them. So with Oak Park, the division, the good start, yeah, you're after a great start. You got Macomb, Dakota. It's a good matchup for you. Macomb, Dakota, not the same team they used to be in past, but still a good opponent. But until you knock off UD Jesuit, which is a really tall ask, I mean, I, I don't know what to say about Oak Park. It's, it's hard to say about them. I mean, they got to overcome that demon. They got to overcome the Cubs. If they can overcome the Cubs, you know, then they can fully maximize their potential. That's how I'm looking at with Oak Park. You got to overcome that demon of the UD Jesuit later in the year. That's where I'm looking at with Oak Park. Um, then you have Berkeley. Berkeley, of course, they played Dearborn, um, 12-15, um, on December the 30th. Um, th Berkeley, to me, this is a really interesting team. I mean, they didn't look good against Troy. Um, had a heartbreaking loss to Avondale. Those are two losses, but they've had some good wins. They knocked off Seaholm. Um, but this is a good matchup, I think, for Berkeley, taking on Dearborn. I mean, Dearborn's a good team. They're solid. I mean. This will be a really interesting matchup for Coach Joe Sermo. For Coach Joe Sermo. I mean, you really look at Berkeley, and obviously you got Timmy Rukovich. You got a star player. I mean, you got really nice role players on that team. The bench basically carried him that game against Seahole. That's really what happened that game. Um, they developed the depth. That's what that's what they need to do. You know, Coach Joe, Joe Sermo is gaining confidence right now with this team. And they're playing well. Ever since he called himself out on Twitter. You know what I mean? Berkeley. I mean, Berkeley, they're 3-1 and one since he called himself out on Twitter. That tells you something right there. It really does. Um, Now, it'll be really interesting to see how they do against Dearborn. I mean, I expect. I mean, I, I think it's going to be a close game. I really do. Um, But we'll see. I think there's a good chance here for Berkeley. Um, you know, if they can win that game, that's going to give them confidence in the new year. We know the Blues wide open. I mean, Royal Oak's been rolling. Um, Oxford's been playing better. Stony Creek, I'm trying to figure them out. Rochester, we know about that win against Adams. Um, Seaholm, once they get healthy, look out. Um, and Troy Athens, we know once they, um, you know, once they get, you know, I think Troy Athens, I think they're improved as well. So, it's a tough division for Berkeley. It really is. Um, but right now, they're on the right track right now. They're, on the, they're clicking on all cylinders right now. So, that's really what it is right now with, um, with Berkeley right now. Big game with Dearborn. Dearborn's a solid team. Um, we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens. Then we're going to go to the North Farmington Showcase here. Of course, um, that is, of course, brought to you by Pepsi. Uh, Pepsi is a sponsor of that tournament, of that um, extravaganza. Um, always love my Mountain Dews. Um, anyway, you got Troy versus Belleville on the 29th, um, 2 o'clock tip. Um, this is going to be a very cl interesting clash of two different styles. Um, with Troy, obviously, I like what Coach Gary Frolic's done with that team. Off to a 5 0 start. Um, Mason Parker's been playing really good basketball. Zach Pinoz has been solid. Um, Chase Kniper's been solid. Um, Darius Whiteside's been playing well. Zach uh, John Whiteside's been playing really well. Um, Troy's got some nice pieces. I really like what Coach Gary Frelick has. And I talked to Athletic Director Shane Hines about this, and he really likes what Troy's doing. And they're going to be scary. I think Troy's a scary team. I mean, if Mason Parker keeps playing the way he's capable of playing, 
And I've known Mason Parker for years. I've known him. I've known him for a long time. And I know what how capable he is. He is a very good player. He is a very, very good player. He can take over a game by himself if he wants to. Um, but Gary Fralick, Coach Fralick, likes the team ball stuff, and that's great. That is one that's great. Troy's playing the right way, I think. You know, when you look at in terms of Larry Brown, I think it's perfect to strive in the Colts. Playing the right way. Playing the ultimate team game. I mean, when you look at the white, obviously, you know, as I mentioned earlier with West Bluefield, 23 and 6 since Christmas, that tells you how loaded that division is going to be this year. That is not an easy division. I will tell you that much right now, the white. That is not going to be an easy division. But their game against Belleville, Belleville, very athletic. Um, I think it's a, that's a very interesting matchup, to say the least, with Belleville. I mean, the Tigers are solid. I mean, I think with Belleville, um, you know, they've had some good wins this year. They're very athletic, very competitive, and I think they're going to pose some problems for Troy. It'd be a heck of a game over there at North Farmington. It'd be a heck of a game over there. It really is. So we'll see what happens. I think it'll be a good game between Troy and um, Belleville um, on the 28th to, on the 29th at 2 o'clock. It'll be a good game. I think it will be. And then North Farmington, the host of their own showcase. Uh, the extravaganza. Um, they play two games at approx 830. They take on Detroit Western. Um, I know it says Detroit's communication media arts on there, but I've been hearing rumors um, from an accurate source that they did change their opponent to Detroit Western, which I think it's a better matchup for North Farmington because, you know, with Detroit Western, their Division One school, Detroit CMA, uh, I think they're Division Three or 2, I think. I'm not real sure. But, Better matchup for North Farmington, though. I mean, especially when you look at a team that's coming off a really difficult loss to Warren Lincoln. The way how they blew that game. I still can't believe how they blew that one. Up 18 and then, like, give it away in overtime. That's pretty much... I, and I know Coach Todd Negotian had me really upset about that. Um, And now you have a chance, you know what I mean? you got proven experience, obviously, with Brian Hurst, Landon Williams, Tyler Spratt, Prince Jackson. Um... You know, when you look at North Farmington, um, you know, and their two games, obviously, you got Detroit Western. Toledo Wetmer's a solid team in Ohio um, that they're that um, Coach Sean Negotian's bringing up to Michigan to play. Um, it's going to be interesting. But I also think North Farmington, if they want to bounce back, you know, if they lose these two games, then something's wrong. Do I see them losing two games? No. But if they can win these next two games, it'll give them some confidence heading into the new year. It'll give them some confidence. And I think it's the team that needs some confidence. They didn't play the Farmington game because that game got postponed because of the um, flu outbreaks around Farmington. Um, but when you look at Farmington's chance in the red this year, they look pretty good. They really do. Um, but other than that, you know, I think North Farmington, you know, clearly, I think they're going to be fine in their own, in their own ex extravaganza. Um, I, mean, I really like what Coach Sean Negotian's done with that. I'm promoting the um, holiday extravaganza. I think he's done a really nice job with that. Um, we talked about the Detroit Public School League Holiday Showcase. Um, Bloopy Hills already. Uh, let's look at the North Bow Showcase and the Carlton Airport Showcase. Avondale's in this one. Um, Avondale, they play South Lion East, which is going to be a really tough game for them um, on December 28th at noon. Um... New South Lion East is, a be is better than people think. That's going to be a tough match for Avenue. It'll be really interesting. Considering Avenue hasn't played in a week. Um, week and a half. Um, yes, avenue has got some good players. Justin Sykes is a very good player. <laughs> um, and then you got the Carlton Airport Showcase. You know, I don't know who Avenue's playing. Um, they haven't named the opponent or anything yet. It's not even on the MHA website. You know, and that's something really to keep an eye on. Could it be Carlton Airport themselves? Maybe. I mean, they already played them before. Um, so that'll be something to really watch for um, over there up in Carlton um, on the 30th. So that's something to really keep an eye on. Um, but Avondale, when I look at them right now, and obviously when you look at the gold, um, Harper Woods is really one that stands out in this division. Um, 
Avondale, I think right now, is the second best team in this division. It's hard for me to trust Southfield right now with the way they're playing. Ferndale University, they've been up and down to 500. I'm going to talk to them in a couple minutes. I mean, they're in the St. Clair um, Community Showcase. We're going to talk that coming up. Um, but at, And Pontiac, we know they've been struggling. So with Avondale, it's going to come down to, I think, is can Avondale, you know, be consistent? You know, if they win these two games, this will be huge for their confidence going forward. If they even split, that could be, that'll be, I would worry if they split. That would be a worrisome thing for me. Um, but other than that, I mean, like, Avondale, I like where they're playing. I like where they're at right now. Um, yes, they had the tough loss to Holly earlier in the year. I think Holly's burning people think. Um, well coached and coached deep to heart. Um, but when you look at Avondale, I mean, look at Avondale, um, they got to win these two games. If they don't, there's going to be some trouble. Um, Heading into the new year for them. We'll see what happens. Um, let's go now to the St. Clair. Um, the new Baltimore Anchor Bay Classic got Rochester. This is a real classic tournament. Um, you got four teams in there. You got um, you got Rochester, Gross Point North, New Baltimore Anchor Bay, and Armada. Um, Rochester plays Gross Point North. It's at five o'clock. Um, and then you have New Baltimore Anchor Bay taking on um, Armada. The winners will meet on the, the next night at 6.30 p.m. in the championship game. The two, um, the losers of those games will meet in the consolation game at 5 p.m. So when I look at Rochester, yes, the Lodge Collage and Grant Calgano had 21 points each in that game against um, Adams. People are going to say, well, it's a big win. For them. They shot a really high percentage. When you shoot 6% from the field, you're going to win games. That's clear. And especially at the gyms, at the three Rochester schools gyms, obviously, Adams, Stony Creek, and um, Rochester's gyms are very, very similar. Um, that pretty much tells you, you know, where that's going to be. You know, that when you shoot a high percentage in those gyms, you're going to win games. Um, and, of course, I, and I view all three Rochester schools as gyms, really good places to shoot at for, um, for shooting guards. Um, now, I might jinx it to people, but it is what it is. But Rochester, you got to look at the way they're playing. They've got confidence with the Adams win. Um, Gross Point North, a tough matchup for them. Um, they got Ariadne on that team. Um, he's a solid player. Um, but when I look at Rochester right now, people are going to say, is Rochester the best team in the blue right now? I think, you know, you, got, you still got you still to put them in the conversation. You got to put Oxford in there. You got to put Berkeley in there. Stony Creek, despite their loss, you got to put them in there. Um, Berkeley, you got to put them in there. I mean, when you really look at Rochester, you got to like where they're at right now, despite the two and two record, um, where they've had some really tough losses. The Water Vermont one was a bit of a mind boggling one for me. Um, but when you look at Rochester, you know, they're in the right track. They really are. Um, I really think the Falcons are a team that could do some, do some damage. Um, if they can win this tournament, you know, and it's a tough tournament to win, you know, that would be good for them. Be really good for them. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, of course, the um freshman JV games over there are playing early as well, and over there at New Baltimore Anchor Bay. So busy day over there at New Baltimore Anchor Bay these next two days over there. So. Really interesting um, storylines over there. Um, and then let's go to the St. Clair Community College Showcase. Um, the boys' side of things. Um, we got Ferndale University taking on Sanford Meridian. Um, that's at 5.30 p.m. Um, when you look at the Eagles, um, they're 3-3 three and three right now. I mean, there's games they look good. There's games they go not so good. Um, looking at this matchup against Sanford Meridian, um, Sanford Meridian's not a bad team. I mean... They're in the um they've they had two tough losses to um Gladwin and Ogama Heights. Um knocked off Shepard, who's a, who's okay this year. Had some they had a good win against Bay City All Saints. One point win there. Um the Mustangs have been really competitive. Um this is not going to be an easy game for Coach Josh Nix. It really is not. 
Um, because if Ferndale University says, okay, you know, we're going to be, we're going to come in here, you know what I mean? Like, you know, not taking them lightly. You're wrong. I mean, here's why. Sanford Meridian, they're a better team than people think. I mean, yes, they played a tough schedule. They've had a lot of close games. Yes, Ferndale University plays in the gold. I mean, like, yes, I mean, like, could they be a player in this division? Yes, they can be. Um, I really like what Coach Josh Nix has done. But if you're Coach Nix, you have got to make sure you're not underestimating Meridian. You do, you're going to get beat. You know, it's clearly, it's going to be very interesting. Clash of Dubin Styles. Ferdinand University wants to go up and down. Meridian wants to slow the game down. I mean, you notice in their games, you know, they're averaging like around 40, under 40 points a game. That tells you something. Northern Michigan has got some good basketball teams up there. They got some really good teams up there. Um, so we're going to see what happens. I mean, we're going to see what happens there. I think for Ferdinand University, that is a trap game right there. It really is. Um, and then there's Troy Athens. Um, Troy Athens, they play, um, they play, um, two games this week in the Holiday Classics. Of course, they play at Little Caesars Arena against Okemos. Um, that's going to be a very interesting matchup, um, over there at LCA. I mean, like, that's going to, I mean, playing at LCA, it's really interesting. It's a great experience for the kids. Um, you know, great experience for them. But when you're playing against, um, when you're playing against, you know, Oakland is a solid team, solid program, really good team. And then they got to go play um, Madison Heights Lampier. Um, that's going to be really interesting, that matchup for Coach Dave Scott. Um, and the, also the other issue is they haven't played in a week. That's a big issue. If you haven't played in a week and a half, you know, you're still going to be rusty. So I'm very curious to see how Troy Athens does in the, um, over at LCA against Okemos. Considering, you know, where you got to find the three-point line, where you got to find the, you know, you're basically playing, you got two, you got um, two, two three-point lines, basically. You got the NBA line. Um, I don't think there's a college line there. And then, you know, you got the um, high school three-point line. I mean, so I'm very curious to see how Coach Dave Scott adjusts, you know, to playing at LCA. Because it's a much different atmosphere than playing at a um than playing in a high school gym. It really is. Um, so I'll be very curious to see what happens when that one Troy happens. And then going to St. Clair Community College, taking on Mass Knights Lamp here. It's a tough matchup for them. It really is. So but I think Athens, they can they can hang there. I mean, they played there last year, had a really tough loss um to Port Huron Northern. Um and that was a really difficult loss. I heard that game on the radio up there. Um, I mean, in the Blue Water area, um, you know, they, I mean, WLAW radio, I mean, up in the, on the thumb area, great radio station, encourage it. Um, I mean, like, great radio station. Um, but for Troy Athens, you know, if they can get two wins this week, that'll be a big deal. There'll be some big time comments I'm hanging in the new year. So we'll see what happens. And then other games, of course, the um, non-league games, obviously Clark, I mean, like, you got... Clarkson taking on Utica Eisenhower. Um, that's a big game, I think, for Clarkson. I don't think they've been looking very good lately. They've had to survive three games, basically with three points or less. And then they just lost to Flint Carbon Ainsworth by 12. Um, I think there's some serious concerns with Clarkson. I really do. I mean, you know, where are they at offensively? That's a big question I have for, for Coach I'm Tim Wasilek. Big game with Utica Eisenhower, really tough matchup for them. So that's something to really, really watch for. Really tough matchup for them. Um, Groves taking on Wall Lake Central on December 29th in Beverly Hills. Um, Groves, I like the way they've been playing despite the two losses to Clarkson in overtime, and then, um, and then to and then the um, loss to Groves Point South. Um, Mark West has done a really nice job with that team. Josh Simpson and Josh Gibson have really been playing outstanding basketball for them. Um, they've got some others as well. I really like with that team. Um, Mark West has got that team in the right direction. I mean, that's clear, clear as day. I mean, that's clearly what's going on with them. And then you have, um, Farmington taking on River Rouge. Um, that we played at River Rouge on December 30th at 7 PM. Um, 
For Farmington, first game back since the flu outbreak. Uh, I don't know how healthy they're going to be uh, for Coach Eric McDonald. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with them. Um, I think the Falcons got a good chance here. I mean, River Rouge is a good team. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Um, so it'll be a tough matchup to say the least. So we're going to see what happens um, with Farmington in their match with Girls Point South. Um, they've been playing better, um, much better. So we'll see what happens there in the, um, in the, um, for them going forward there. Um, let's go now from the boys. I want to talk the girls, um, holiday classics, obviously. Um, there's not a lot of girls teams in the holiday classics, but there are a few of them. Um, we're going to preview some of those. Um, let's go to the, um, St. Clair Community College Showcase. This is a game being played on December 30th at, um, 9.30 a.m. Um, Oak Park is taking on Deckerville. Um, when I look at the Oak Park, and yes, they had 50 points against Detroit Martin Luther King. That is a big deal. I mean, that is the first time I've seen Oak Park put up more than 30 points in a, maybe two years. That says something right there. But then when they get back in the league play, playing against Farmington and Bloomfield Hills, you're putting up only like 16 to 20 points. That's not a good recipe. Really isn't. Um, and now you're taking on a Deckerville team, you know, that started off the year 0-2, and, and now they're beating, they're rolling. I mean, they they play in a very good conference, the Greater Thumb Conference. Um, you're going against teams likes of, you know, you're going, I mean, they've going up, they're going up against some good teams. But for Oak Park, the biggest problem I have with them is going to be is they're not consistent enough. That's the problem I have with Coach Chantel Corson's team is, you know, what are you? That's what I, I will say with Oak Park. It's a famous BT, BT quote. It says, who are you? You know, that's what I'm asking with Oak Park. I mean, Oak Park's coming off an 0-2 start with losses to Croswell, Lex, and Armada. Both teams in the blue water. Very good teams. And then they've rolled 1-4 straight. So it's a difficult matchup for Oak Park going against the Eagles, you know, at St. Clair Community College. It's a very difficult matchup. Do I think Oak Park's got a chance in this game? Yes. I think they got a great chance. <laughs> but they've got to play well. If they have a game where they only are, not, are at the 20s, that could be a problem. Because Deckerville is a better team than people think they are. And if Oak Park loses that game to Deckerville, they're in some trouble. I mean, when you look at the blue right now, obviously, you look at that division. Bloomfield Hills, you have Bloomfield Hills, you have Farmington, you know. And Avenue, I think, is the third best team. Other than that, the four, the four teams in there in that division are wide open. I mean, you got Ferndale University, they haven't played really well. Ferndale hasn't played really well. Pontiac hasn't played really well. And Oak Park hasn't played really well. So, between those four teams in that division is who's going to be the four that break through in that division? Because cause it's clear to me, you know, that the top three in that division set. I mean, with Bloomfield Hills, Farmington, and Avondale. Um, the question is, who's going to be the other four? That's the big question. Oak Park's had a great chance if they can knock off a very good... um. A very good Deckerville team. Because if they don't, they're in trouble. I mean, but like I said, there are some wins there that are available for them. I mean, pending, you know, with what Ferndale University's done this year, what Ferndale's done this year, what Pontiac's done this year. I mean, there are wins available. So we'll see what happens with them. So Keith Rogue Park against Deckerville is, you know, you know, you know that you played a tougher schedule than Deckerville. But Deckerville's a good team. So, you know, we're going to see what happens tonight. We really are. Um, now let's go to the um, St. Clair Community. I mean, let's go to the um, to the um, Detroit Public School Holiday Classic. This will be at Detroit Renaissance for the girls. Um, you got Harper Woods taking on Detroit Mumford. Game being played on December 28th at 1245. Um, this is a good match for Harper Woods. Harper Woods has been rolling. I mean, they've been scoring points. Um, they sit at four and one. Um, look, I like what Coach Paul Allen's done. To see that Peters, Peterson's been a star player for them, um, averaging fifty points a game. That's actually pretty good 
even their loss to Royal Oak, where they lost that one by three, they scored 50 points. And that, Royal Oak's a very good defensive team. Really are. Um, but Detroit Mumford's been two and two. Haven't really liked how the Mustangs have played lately. Um, but I think this is a good chance for Harper Woods to see, okay, let's go in here. Let's win. You know what I mean? Go five and one. Get some confidence, especially hanging the white, which looks like, um, which I still think that white division looks like it's Oxford's to lose. Then it's North Farmington. Um, North Farmington, we're going to talk to them in a couple minutes because they got a big one moving with second on the hill. Um, and I think that could be a place where they could get their first loss um, if they're not careful. But Harper Woods, you know, people have not talked a lot about the Pioneers. I mean, obviously, Harper Woods has made a ton of noise this offseason, obviously, with the enrollment hike. Um, going up to Division One, playing, I mean, being in a very tough district when you have teams like Growth Point North, Growth Point South, Lakeview are in there. I mean, like, it's no cupcake district at all. But for Harper Woods, um, they got a good chance here. I think they do very well. And I think, you know, they are, they're clicking on all cylinders right now. Yes, they're 2-0 and against teams from Detroit and um, other, with, with teams named Detroit and other academies on there. I mean, they just knocked off, also knocked off St. Clair Shore Salt Lake in there. And they have a win against Troy Athens. Of course, that win against Troy Athens, I honestly think, in my opinion, that's their best win of the year right now is that Troy Athens game. But for Harper Woods, um, for them in the white right now, they've got, they still got some ground to make up. I mean, obviously, you know, you look at the division we mentioned earlier, um, I mean, they're middle of the pack right now. If they want to be clearly top team in that division, you're going to have to beat Oxford. You're going to have to beat North Farmington. I mean, I mean, you look at obviously Berkeley. We don't know what Berkeley has. I mean, like Seaholm, they're struggling. Um, you know, Troy Athens, they've been up and down. Um, and then you look at Adams. Adams has been struggling. So there's some wins out there for Harper Woods to get. But, you know, but clearly for them, you know, they got to knock off the top three teams. I mean, you got to knock off Oxford, obviously. Then you have Royal Oak and North Farmington. You knock off those three teams, you're going to be, you're going to be in that conversation. I mean, right now, clearly to me in that white division, it looks like Oxford's the cream of the crop in that division. Then it's North Farmington, then Royal Oak, then it's Harper Woods right now. That's where I'm seeing the pioneers right now. They should knock off Detroit Mumford. If they don't, something's wrong. So we'll see what happens over there at um, Detroit Renaissance um, in the Detroit Public School League Holiday Classic. Um, I know, um, you know, that'll be very interesting to see what, what Harper Woods does against Detroit, against Detroit Mumford. Really interesting to see what happens. Um, let's go now to the um, Motor City Round Ball. Of course, um, three games here in this. We got Clarkson taking on Grand Blank. Um, you know, when you look at this matchup, and this is a very interesting matchup. I mean, Grand Blank's got two very good players in Chelsea Bishop and Jada McCray. McCray's had a really nice start. So is Chelsea Bishop. Clarkson, on the other hand, yes, they're young. Yes, they haven't had Ollie Roback. I expect Roback back for this game against Grand Blank. Um, but when you look at what Clarkson's done, they've had to survive some games. I mean, Graham, I mean, they survived Groves the other night, 43-40. Um, now, being without Roback. Yes, you got Kira Tomi. Yes, you have Ava Hernandez. Yes, you have Ellery Hernandez. You have Mia Zorsky. You have Claire Walker. I mean, you got a nice team there. The problem that I have with Clarkson is their depth's a big concern. It's a big concern for Coach Aaron Good now. And now you're playing against a Grand Blank team who's got a lot of depth, a lot of experience. Um, the good news is you should have Roback back for this game. I mean, but if you don't, you're in trouble. I mean, that's clear as day what's, what could happen here for Clarkson is if they don't have Roback back. That's how much of a difference Ellie Roback makes. She was very good against Saginaw Heritage. She was good against Macomb Dakota prior to getting hurt. I mean... Clear is, I mean, like, clearly, if you're going to good now and you look at yourself in the red right now, you know, you got some concerns. Obviously, when you look at the teams in there, you got West Bloomfield, 
you got Lake Orion, you got Rochester, um, you got Groves. I mean, Groves, you had to win that game by three points. You still got to go to Beverly Hills. That's not going to be an easy trip. Um, and then you still got to play West Bloomfield when you get back from the break. That's difficult. That's difficult for Coach Aaron Goodenow. Um, so when you really look at Clarkston, this is a must-win game for you. Considering who you got in the who you got later on, you still got to play Oxford in Detroit Country Day. That's not easy. So that's going to be really something to keep an eye on. It's a tough stretch for Clarkson coming up. It really is. They need Roback back. I expect Roback will be back for that game. I expect. I mean, when you look at that district, obviously you got Lake Orion in there. Um, and you still got to play him in the regular season. So, when you look at the rankings, obviously, I still don't understand how Lake Orion is not a top 25 team. To me, that's just wrong. I mean, Rochester and West Bloomfield are ranked in there. I don't know why Lake Orion's not. Um, that's my rant of the day. Um, but back to Clarkson. I mean, for Clarkson, they have to win this game against Grand Blake because it'll be a confidence boost for them heading into the heading into the new year. If they don't, they could be in some trouble. And it's clear as day. You know what I mean? For Clarkson. You know, they have to at least, against Grand Blanc, they have to at least control tempo. If they do, they got a good chance. Because obviously the matchup between Rollback and Chelsea Bishop is going to be really interesting. Um, Could they put Kira Tomey there? It's a possibility. So, very curious to see what Coach Aaron Goodenow does in this game against Grand Blanc. Really curious to see how they do. Um, and then let's look at West Bloomfield. Um, West Bloom, but they play Kentwood, Illinois at 12.40 p.m. on December 29th. You know, when I look at this one, West Bloomfield and Showcase Games is two and two. I watched the interview with um, with um, Civic Center TV. I know Tyler Kraft very well. Um, I watched his interview with Coach Aaron McAllister, you know, talking about the family atmosphere West Bloom has. Obviously, with both, you have the Davis sisters, you have the Hendrick sisters, Destiny Washington, of course. There's family there. I mean, West Bloom is a family-oriented team. That's clear. I mean, like, you know, and, they, and you know, last year, obviously, winning, winning the Division One state title, that says a lot. But you're 2-2 two and two in showcase games. That's a little unusual. I mean, you're coming off a really tough loss to Ypsilanti Arbor Prep. Yes, I know the Ubalbi Twins and the Davis Twins are really close. I get it. Um, you know, I know that bond playing on the Michigan Storm AU team. I know that bond. Um, and then the loss of South Bend, Indiana, um, wa South Bend, Washington, Indiana. Um, but the game against Arbor Prep, you know, West Movie blew a 22-9 first quarter lead. That can't happen. <clears throat> that really can't happen. I mean, that really stunned me. They had a bounce back week against Stony Creek and um and Arbor Pioneer where they blew both teams out. Um but I'm curious to see this matchup because Kentwood, Illinois has four they're coming in twelve and one, ranked third in the state in Illinois, and they and their best player as a freshman is averaging fifteen points a game. That says something. They got four very good players. I mean Kenwood, Illinois has got four really good players for West Bloomfield to handle. That's going to be very difficult. And when I'm looking at the stats in the two losses, West Bloomfield allowed over 60 points in both those losses. When you look at this matchup for them, I mean, like, you look at Kentwood, Illinois. They've got four players that I mentioned. You got Daniel Brooks, they have 15 a game, Natasha Barnes, Solid rebounder, average 11 a game. Giselle Young, another good rebounder. And Ariana Hennigan. I mean, those four players, that's a tough matchup. Now, let's boom, we can say, well, we have the Davis sisters. We have the Hendricks sisters. We have the, we have, we have Ava Lord. We have Destiny Washington. We're going to be fine. I am really concerned about this game for West Bloomfield because of the depth. I mean, like the depth, 
is a real concern for me when it comes for West Blue Bills. Yes, you're playing a good team. I mean, I expect it's going to be a high-scoring game between those two teams. I'd be shocked if Kentwood, Illinois struggles in this tournament. I'd be really shocked. They play Westfield Prep, and then they play West Blueville. But there's a reason why they're 12-1 coming in. Big reason. So it's going to be a tough task for West Blueville. Um, They win this game. It's going to give them big confidence heading into the new year. I mean, obviously back in the red play, um, obviously I still think West Bluebeard's greatest threats in the division are going to be Lake Orion and Rochester. Um, because both teams present different looks against West Bluebeard. So really curious to see what happens with them going forward. Really, really curious. But for West Bluebeard, taking on Kentwood, Illinois, tough matchup for them. Um, we're going to see what happens there. Um, and then there's North Farmington. Um, when you look at the Raiders, they're 7-0. Obviously, Oxford's toughest challenger in the white this year. Um, you got some proven players in them. Sarah Leffler, Penelope Crary. Um, but Eliza Muller's really stepped up her game, um, being that third score for North Farmington. Um, when you look at their matchup um, against Saginaw Arthur Hill, which that's going to be a really interesting matchup if both teams are coming in there undefeated. Now, Saginaw Arthur Hill, they got to play Macomb, Dakota. Uh, and that's going to be a really interesting game there. I mean, they play on December 30th at 1240 North Farmington against Saginaw Arthur Hill. Um, here's my thought on this. If you're Coach Jeff Simpson, I would scout this game because Saginaw Arthur Hill is loaded. They got some really good, talented players on that team. That could definitely give you problems. I mean, you look at players in Haley Jefferson, Reagan Bird, Julia Griggs, Dasani Washington, Diamond Robinson. That's going to be problematic for North Farmington. And considering North Farmington is not a big team. I mean, that could be a big, big problem if they have size. I mean, yes, North Farmington can use that 2 2 one full court trap all they want. But if you're the Raiders and you're... You know, you're going to need Leffler to at least score you 20. You need Curry to score you 20. You know, Muller to at least give you 15. That gives you a chance. And North Farmington, let's not forget, they struggle in these games. They have, I think they've only won one game in the in the showcase, in the round ball. That's a problem. So, if North Farmington can win this game, get undefeated, that's a big confidence boost for Coach Jeff Simpson. Big time. Because if they lose to Arthur Hill, then that could be, could that, we don't know what's going to happen hanging in the year. Because obviously when you look at the division, you got to play Royal Oak. And Royal Oak's, a, Royal Oak's playing better. They're playing much better. So that's going to be a tough match for Coach Jeff Simpson. It'll really be a tough couple games for him. And then there's Oxford. You know, then there's Oxford. I mean, so it's going to be a tall task for Coach, for North Farmington. Um... But Arthur Hill, that's a big game for Coach Jeff Simpson. You know, if they can if they can keep it going, they can keep the undefeated ride going, you know, that's going to be really interesting. See what happens there. I'd be shocked if they lose that game. I mean, you got two opportunities to watch Arthur Hill. You got an opportunity to watch him against McComb Dakota. So we'll see what happens. Of course, we're going to recap all the games on the blog at um, Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com to recap them all. Um... There could be some changes to the rankings next week, so we'll see what happens going forward there. Um, like I said, it was a great year for the OA in 2022. Um, looking forward, looking ahead to 2023. A lot of great things are ahead for this league. For the, you know, especially when you look at you know spring sports coming up pretty soon. On uh, the winter season, well underway as we speak. Um, football season coming up next fall. I mean, like fall sports coming up next fall. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, all right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. want to wish everybody a happy, um, of course, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, and a happy new year to everybody around OA Nation. Of course, um, of course, um, you know, looking forward to great things in 2023. Um, podcast going really, really well. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. Happy new year to everybody. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care. God bless. See you next week, everybody.
Captain.